Hi, Nicholas Vince here. Today's guest on the Chattering Hour is Tamara Glynn. We talk about how a 13-year-old girl left the farm on Arkansas and went to Los Angeles and eventually ended up in the film Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. She reveals an exclusive, never-before-told story about an experience on that set. And we also talk about working with Billy Bob Thornton and recently with Richie Ramone. All that and much more up next on The Chattering Hour. Tamara started her career as a model as a teenager in Arkansas before moving to Los Angeles, where she worked on TV series such as Growing Pains, Knott's Landing, Freddy's Nightmares, and Miami Vice. More recently, she's been concentrating on independent horror films in front of and behind the camera, and she co-created the Hot Springs International Film Festival. Tamara, thank you so very much indeed for joining me today. Oh, I, I, you know, Nick, I'm a huge fan of yours and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this amazing, beautiful opportunity. Oh. I'm, I'm excited to be with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, well, I'm going to start at the very beginning, if I may. You were awesome. brought up in Hot Springs, Arkansas. So it wasn't Hot Springs. Hot Springs was a neighboring town. My town was actually Arkadelphia, like Philadelphia, right. but Arkadelphia. Yes. So I'm, I'm a Southern girl. Um, yeah. And what was your childhood like? Um, I grew up on a farm. Uh, my grandparents were in the cattle business. And so I grew up with several hundred heads of cows and horses, right. uh, chickens. Um, yeah, the total of farm girl. And I grew up, um, you know, I was in church every Sunday. And in fact, I was, it's a really crazy story. I have to tell you this. Sure. I, I grew up singing in church and church got me to horror. <laughs> Go figure, Nick. I know. How, so how did that come about? So church led to me wanting to perform like because I was a singer right. you know and um I was singing like all these Sunday solos all that kind of stuff and then that led to like beauty pageants that led to modeling I did my first um broadcast uh commercial for Gloria Vanderbilt when I was 12 and then um that led to a talent agent in LA and I went to LA from Arkadelphia Arkansas um with yeah I had an agent on board when I went out there so how old how old were you then when you had the agent and went out, went out to LA? Oh Lord, I think I was thirteen. Wow. So your folks went with you? Of you, your folks. My my mom went. Yeah, my mom went. Yeah. Right, right. And you. Yeah. So once you landed in LA, you were doing what modeling or? Acting? I was. I mean, I started working immediately. I was booking shows like Knots Landing, Growing Pains, like all the big like eighty show shows and it's really funny my mom had never worked a day in her life ever and um she knew that she had to work now I mean she's got a kid in LA so the human resources director at Universal Studios who we met through a casting director his name was Ruben Estrada Ruben Estrada made my mom sit and type for like hours he taught her how to type and then my mom ended up working her way up to be the executive assistant to Michael Mann, which was the executive producer of this little show called Miami Vice. Ah, yeah. Ah. So did you did you do any training whilst you when you moved out to LA? For I did. I studied with Rick Walters. Um, I did scene study um, with him. Um, I had classes that, you know, Priscilla Presley was in, which was amazing. Um, I studied privately with Jared Barkley. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I studied and I, I did not want to go to school. 
Um, and I was, because my mom was working like 90 hours a week, you know, seriously. I mean, she worked like all the time. Yeah. So um, I was a Universal Studios brat and um, I just wanted to study and act and yeah. Right. Do you remember any of the lessons in terms of acting? Do you remember any particular valuable lesson you learned as an actor from, yeah, the, from the classes? I did. And that was taking complete ownership of the role. Right. Yeah. Just, you know, just the memorization, just going so deep into character and just creating the character and, and making it your own. Uh, yeah, and is, it, is that what attracts you to act? I mean, is that what you talked about singing and performing, um, wanting to be on stage, etc. Is that kind of what attracted you to the idea of acting this experience? You know, I think the um, my emotional bank that I have, because I've been through a lot in life, um, and my family went through a lot. I mean, there's just, there's so much information in my emotional bank. Um, it's very liberating to go there, to tap in and to create um, beautiful characters. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I, know, I know what you mean is that, that I was thinking the other day, in fact, I was thinking just last night when I was coming back from seeing friends about a project I'm working on, which is based on a lot of personal pain. I'm thinking, if I'm going to be in pain, I'm going to be creative about it. Right. I'm going to get something out of, you know, right. this, this is going to come Wonderful out of something. therapy. Great mm. therapy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, seriously, it is. Yeah, yeah, I think, it, yeah, really, because it really helps us explore and, and, and kind of define and put a shape around things. Right. Cool, okay, so you, you're doing TVs and so on, and then you got um, Samantha Thomas in Halloween 5. How did that come about? So I was, Michael Mann had called me and asked me if I wanted to do the last episode ever, you know, the, the show finale of Miami Vice. Right. And right. I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. So I'm packing, getting ready to leave for Miami. And I get a call from my agent and she said, run down to, I mean, I was in Studio City at the time, run down to Ventura Boulevard, get your sides. You have an audition for Halloween five. And I'm like, okay. And I'm, and she's like, it's tomorrow. And I'm like, okay. And I was flying out to Miami the next day. So I go and I get the sides. I go in from, and I was so happy. I was so excited because my mom, God rest her soul, she had introduced me to the horror genre. And oh. I, had, I had seen the original Halloween when I was 10. Oh. I was a huge, huge, huge fan of the franchise. Right. So I'm jumping up and down going, oh my God, I cannot believe I have an audition for something with Michael Myers. Are you kidding me? I mean, this is like, a dream come true. So I go in, I audition, they're already at the crew, the producers, everybody is already in Salt Lake City. So they, you know, back then it was tape. <laughs> so they overnighted the tape. And um, the next day I fly out to Miami to go do Vice. And then I got a call while I was on set to call my agent. And they were letting me know that I had booked H5 while I'm on the set of Vice in Miami. Wow. And then so basically, Basically, I leave Miami and go straight to Salt Lake City. Right, right. So um, just before we get into Halloween 5 itself, we talk about the genre films, your mother introducing you to horror films. What were, I mean, Ten's quite young to be watching Halloween, but was this just kind of like, I'm sitting with mum, everything's okay, or? Yeah, it was very comforting. And I think because my family was cursed with just one, traumatic accident one tragedy right after the other and it was a great way for i i don't know the psychological connection and how to phrase that emotionally but it was this like escape to where we could watch that and maybe it didn't make our darkness seem as dark and severe as it was right Right, right. You know, it, it was, yeah, it was very comforting. 
Right, right. Do you remember any of the other films you were watching then? Um, you know, just like The Exorcist. I know, I know. And I, uh, my, <laughs> my mother, and you're talking to this girl who's a Southern Baptist. I mean, come on. You know, I grew up in church. Um, uh, but no, just the darkness of like horror movies. Um, I think they were a great, great, great way to escape right. from the daily, from the real life, emotional like stuff that my family had had gone through right right and were you seeing this uh, these things in the cinema yes yeah 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 I, mean, there's some, I, I think there's something very cathartic about you know it it's a training for dealing with fear as far as i'm yes, concerned yes. you know this and dealing with some you know not just fear but also some of the big questions and so on oh okay well it's fascinating i mean that's fascinating so going back to Halloween five then, so you, you get the part. You, so did you film immediately after um, yeah. Miami Vice yeah. then? So literally. Hop yes, up. literally. And so then I get to Salt Lake City and I don't like my death scene. So I presented to Mustafa Akkad. I'm like, Mr. Akkad, I don't like the way I die. This, this is not gonna work for me. And he's like, and I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, we, we got to change this. I know, Nick, I'm 20 years old, you know, whatever, you know. But I literally, because I, I really believed in Samantha's character. I'm like, because she's like, la, 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 all over the place, you know. And I wanted to see a piece of myself, you know. <laughs> I wanted to see me be the badass that I was in real life, because I'm farm girl, you right. know. Yeah. I, I wanted to come back and like be that badass and like go for him. I'm not going to die by a whack. Nope, nope, not happening, Nick. So they, <sighs> um, they, they listened to me and it, it worked out very well. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So what, so obviously you've got the script, you knew what you were going into in terms of, you know, the kind of the out, outline. What was the actual experience of filming like though? Because I was watching the film earlier on today and just like, it's raunchy. I mean, even for the time, that's that could, really yeah. quite a, a raunchy scene. So how, how did that work? You know, um, we, the director was European. Um, one thing he did that made me incredibly uncomfortable that I've never um, discussed ever. Um, mm -hmm. He wanted my co-star, Matthew Walker, who played Spitz, he wanted us to rehearse the lovemaking scene in his hotel room. Wow. You know, and um, I, I've never talked about this for obvious reasons. Um, and that, that's tough, you yeah. know, the whole, the stress behind, I mean, you're 20 years old. It's your first, you know, feature link film. Mm -hmm. Um, it's from Halloween. Um, yeah, the director and, and I've defended him on many occasions, uh, because, you know, there the there's just a lot wrong with Halloween vibe. Number one, it came off too too soon off the hills of four, you know, because four had this massive, you know, much more success than five. Mm -hmm. And I've defended all of this. And I, I feel that now, you know, um it's time I just, you know, I'm gonna speak the truth. Right. Um, you know, everyone was amazing except for just the level of being so uncomfortable with the director. So how, what happened when he proposed this? Did you have to go well, through? Well, we went to his room. We did. And then I'm like, I can't do this. And I know that he's had derogatory things to say about me and that's fine. Um, you know, I, I personally know what happened, you know? And I love, I mean, you know, 
the way things are now in 21 compared to 1989, I mean, my God, that's 33 years ago. Mm. You know, mm. the world's changed. You know, we, we live in different times. Mm. You know, also mm. on that film, uh, real weapons, real, real, um, like the pitchfork was real. Everything was real. And thank God for Don Shanks, AKA our, the shape Michael Myers, because, you know, Don was a professional stuntman. But there were so many things looking back, I'm just like, no one, they, they couldn't get by with that today. Mm. Mm. I mean, they, they, I mean, they just couldn't. So what sort of thing in particular, we, I don't know if you can remember any example. Well, I, 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 I'm still amazed by this fact that the director, and I presume your co-star must have felt fairly uncomfortable as well. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, um, because as you said, you know, for that time, it was, I mean, they were pushing it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And from my perspective, you're trying your best to be professional. You're doing this. And also in my contract, um, you know, there was a there was a clause in there for partial nudity mm -hmm. down the side. It was like a profile partial nudity. And the wardrobe department messed that up. And um, yeah, that didn't happen. So yay me. <laughs> you know. What, so what, you've got you've had this horrible experience with the director the previous night what was it like on set the following day then when you actually yeah, every movie? everything was good you know um knb effects greg nicotero <coughs> sorry um his company did i mean they they did all the you know special effects in the mask and i mean greg you know i mean you know walking dead i mean his yeah. accolades today are just amazing i'm so proud for him yeah um it was great working with Danielle, the other co-stars. Uh, the producers were great. And I really, 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 I fell in love with Mr. Akkad. He was just, you know, he was the classiest, just most beautiful soul. Right. Um, you know, Donald Pleasance and I didn't have any scenes. Um, however, I, I mean, we would, I did see him in the makeup trailer and he definitely commanded, I mean, that inner oh well oh, you know so it, it was all great it's just the director um and i'm sure maybe he has some looking back he may or may not have some regrets um but you know um it is what it is mm -hmm. um we live and we learn yeah and we grow yeah and we it's just um but like i said just with everything that the world encompasses today in, in, you know, an in independent film and film overall, looking back, it's just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Did you, you were talking about Donald Pleasance. Did you, uh, did you have a chance to share a joke with him? Or as you say, you just- He was, the, the times I saw him, I mean, he was literally like in the makeup trailer going in and out. And I was, I was in awe. I was in awe. I mean, he was like, I mean, he was like a god to me. I mean, it's Donald Pleasant. <laughs> just, just the most- Even at 20 years old, Nick, even at 20 years old, I'm like, oh, it's Donald Pleasant. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I remember him playing Blofeld in the Bond movie and just being, who is this guy? Because he's just got that. Yeah, I, he's one, I mean, I'm not a fangirl. I'm not, um, but Donald Pleasant, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, girl. and you were talking about the rest of the cast and Danielle Harris. Because yeah. how old was Danielle at that stage? I want to say she was 10. Right. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I thought she was about 10, 11. Yeah. Yeah, 10, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. still and young. I, yeah, and I was friends with her mom. And like I said, the cast, the crew, um, everyone was absolutely, you know, amazing. And it's been great. You know, Danielle's a mom now of, of two little boys. And I, I love, I love running into her because she's got her kids with her. And it's just like, where has time gone? Right. I mean, I, I can't believe that she's mama now. And 
And I'm so proud for her and all of her success. And her husband is a sweetheart. I mean, her family. I mean, we go we go back many, many, many years. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. With I mean, what you know, apart from obviously what we talked about and you saying was is fun and working with with the rest of the. Day. Were there any jokes or pranks played during Halloween Five, or was it that kind of set? Or? Well, I mean. I would be standing there talking to Don Shanks and um, then he would like disappear. And then I would get this tap on my shoulder and I would turn around and he was in the mask. And I would scream, literally. I mean, he scared these shit out of me, Nick. And the barn, that whole sequence, I, I got scared. Those those tears, all of that, that was real. That was not acting. I mean, I, I put the fear of God in myself. I did. Right, right. And then when I then when I go back on the, the wall of the barn, um, there was a rusty nail that went into my arm. So then they had to get me to the ER to go to a tetanus shot. Yeah. There was like. Yeah. 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 Things happen. You know, when you're doing your own stunts, Nick. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I I feel for you having had to go you know, go off set on Hellbound to get a tenderness shot, yeah. shot as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Things happen. Yeah. 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 So you've done that. You moved on. I think the next thing is Freddy's Nightmares. You did a wonderful episode. Uh, Love stinks. How did that come about? Um, that was another audition. And, um, you know, I, that was directed by John Lithia. Um, and John, um, John took his own life last year. Right. And that was tough. I really admired him um, and his just creative, everything he has given to, to the genre as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, that was that took me by shock. He and I had connect, reconnected um, on Facebook, right? And I mean, who knew? This is the this is the terrible thing when yeah. you lose people. You know, we you just do not know, know. what's going on in someone else's life. It, it's that's why I try not to be judgmental about it. Right. Why are you behaving like it? It's like I have no idea what's going on in your life. You know, right. see right. what's on the surface. But right. really, it's so hard to get to know what's going but on. But that was um that was such a fun episode, and it was great. Um, my co-star, um, John Washington. He would he was a descendant of George Washington. Oh he really? Was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, that was just more fun. I mean, I had more fun listening to you know all of his you know historical um, backstory than I mean I did filming. I mean it was just. You know, it was it was a great time. Right, right, sure. right. And one of the other things you went on to do was Daddy and Them, written and directed by Billy Bob Thornton. How did that come about? So Billy's mom and my mom were like best friends. Um Billy's mom was a psychic. Uh -huh. And I mean, Jay Leno has talked about her. I mean, it's it's out there. I mean, I'm you know I'm not telling anything that hasn't been publicly announced already. So Virginia and my mom became friends when I was like six or seven. Okay. Yeah. So Billy had been in my life for like decades. I mean, Billy was like family. Right. That's how. Yeah. That's how that came about. Right. Yeah. And what was it like working with him as a director? Because he directed a few things by this day. Right, 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 right. Um, you know, I mean, working for working for and with Billy, I mean, it's like working with your brother. You know, um, I'm just, I'm so proud of him. You know, he's a small town boy from Melbourne, Arkansas. You know, he went to LA the first time, then he goes back to Arkansas. And uh, funny story, he was... Um, he was dating a girl from Arkansas that moved to California with him. And 
they became um, our roommates. They lived with me and my mom. Oh, okay. They did. Okay. Yeah. Right, right. And so what about, you say he's being directed by the brother. Yeah. What's his kind of technique? And so if, if he has a, a clear technique in terms of directing. You know, I would say Billy is just the most transparent. He's just transparent and he's just a good old boy, takes a pure, raw, natural approach. Um, <coughs> sorry. He has been so blessed to have this beautiful career, but he has, I mean, he's definitely paid his dues mm. and, um, and put the work in. Yeah, yeah. He has. Yeah, because I mean, he, he, he assembled an amazing cast. And we got Laura Dern, Diane right. Ladd, Ben Affleck, Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh, yeah, there's a yeah. connection. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you get to hang out with any of, the, of those folks? Or? So when Daddy and them um, came to Arkansas, I mean, I was already back in Arkansas living. Um, you know, we went over to Billy and Laura were renting um a house they were leasing a house and um i mean i would go over there for dinner um billy also had his cook and his chef in from because they had like food restrictions they were on and like all these meal plans um and so yeah i mean it was just i mean all of that is just so chill and so laid back and you know i've never thought about billy being this you know superstar um i mean billy's just you know his family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you mentioned you moved back from mm -hmm. Los Angeles to Arkansas. What what prompted that move? My grandfather had prostate cancer that spread that started spreading into his other organs, and my mom's um, two brothers had passed away. And with and I'm we've always been we were always the family family first no matter what right. you yeah. just do it for the family yeah and um so we we moved back to take care of my grandparents we did right. they, they had a massive cattle and then you know when mom and i got back um we didn't know i wanted to eventually move to dallas or you know somewhere where i could still work but then we had been back in arkansas about three months and my cousin was murdered oh my goodness Yes, she was murdered. She was shot point blank in the head. Um, she was she was a lesbian. Right. Uh, she was she was a basketball star, and she was teaching girls basketball. It was my aunt that went to the Supreme Court a hundred years ago when girls were playing half court basketball. It was my aunt that went to the Arkansas Supreme Court to make it get the law passed where you know girls could play full court basketball. Right, right. So, they, and is it, and the, was the fact that your cousin was a lesbian, was that a factor in why she was killed? It was her, um, it was her girlfriend that shot her. Oh. Point blank in the head. Oh. Right there. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And so, did you she say was, she, was, she was one of my favorite, I mean, she was amazing. Right. And her love for kids and her, her drive and her just attitude about life and sports and yeah. Oh. And then, so my grandfather's dying. I mean, he's got, pro you know, cancer and then Lee gets murdered and, you know, yeah. Right, right. So, I mean, you, you ended up staying out of the business for quite a few years. What we, how, well, I mean, I, w I was still in, I mean, I was still doing um, a lot of broadcast commercials locally. Uh, okay. And then also, um, so then I went to work for a production company, a company, a full service multimedia company in Little Rock, Arkansas. Right. And um, I ended up marrying my boss and I have a beautiful 25 year old son as a product of that relationship. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. I've, d I've done about 500 at least 500, you know, broadcast commercials, be it on right. camera or behind camera. Um, yeah. 
So yeah. I, I've always I've always had some kind of connection to the camera. Right. I mean, that's just who I am. This is the only business I know. Right. Um, and you know, putting putting me in a cubicle, I don't think that would work very well, Nick. <laughs> I I mean, I just don't think that would work out very well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But then I kind of like um, you discovered the fandom around Halloween. Um, what was your first inkling of just how popular Halloween Five was? Considering, as you say, it didn't do well. It wasn't. When it, right, right. So it was August twenty seventh, two thousand twelve. Okay. Um, I was messing around on Facebook one day. I mean, I'm just, I've been in Arkansas raising my son, you know, taking care of family. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I'm on Facebook and I come across the big Halloween movies page. And God told me, the universe told me, great spirit, whoever is up there, um, told me to send them a message. I sent them a message and I said, Hey, this is Tamara Glenn. I played Samantha in Halloween five and I'm just reaching out to say hello. And I hope y'all are great. And, you know, just saying hi. I get this immediate response from Justin Beam, who was with Trankus and doing a lot of stuff with Malika Cod at the time. And he said, wait, is this really you? And I'm like, yeah, it's really me. And he goes, really? I'm like, really? He goes, oh my God. I'm like, what is, oh my God? Like what, what? He goes, do you realize how many people have been looking for you? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm like, do you remember me? And he's like, you don't, you're not getting this. And I'm like, I'm just asking, do you remember me? He said, Tamara, People have walked around at conventions with signs up looking for you. Where's Tamara? And I'm like, bullshit. Really? No, whatever. And he's like, can you take a call from me in a couple of hours? I'm like, sure. I'm happy to chat. Sure. So Justin Beam called me and in between our Facebook chatting and the call, he said, Tam, can I tell people on our big page that we found you? And I'm like, nobody's going to freaking remember me. Nobody, nobody. <laughs> so help me God. Nick, he gets on, he makes this post. <coughs> Sorry. Um, within two minutes, I'm standing at my back and the emails, the notifications, they start coming in and they're coming in and they won't stop coming in. And everybody is adding me as a friend. And I'm like, no way. People remember me. Oh my God. This is the sweetest little thing ever. Like people really freaking remember me. And that, that notifications, there were like a couple of thousand that came in like that. And it was so special. And one thing that is so, it's so dear to me, this franchise, because when that happened, uh, my mom was in a nursing home and she was terminal, terminally ill. Mm -hmm. And I'm an only child. And I just had my son. I was divorced from his dad for many years, right. um, but my son was my only living family that I had left. And so when to have that kind of support system after all these years, and then my mom passed away, that was August 27, 2012. And my mom passed away February 4th, 2013. And that, that's just God in the heavens. It's, it, that's karmic. That is um, the most surreal thing because I really know that the universe as a whole wanted, knew that I needed some backup. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's why these Halloween bands are so precious to me. Yeah. I mean, they, they're like my, I mean, seriously. Yeah. I, I love them. They're like my family. They're literally my extended family. For some of them, I bake cookies and send them. I do. <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> I do. I check in on them. How are you doing? Um, you know, seriously, they call me when they have a problem or they call me just to say, hey, and check in with me. And I'm like, love you, mean it. Yep. Bye. See you soon. I mean, I just absolutely worship them. I am so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think it's strange. I don't know. Obviously, I think viewers of our show, of the show, uh, and, and the regular guests and so on are, are enthusiasts for our work and and so on and meet at conventions and so on. I've mentioned it before if I'm mentioning it with Eileen you know I've, I've been invited to people's weddings and yeah. so on. and it's they really do are very close friends I mean you know it's it's I do consider us so fortunate that we're in this yeah. incredible position to be able to yeah kind of share stories and, and meet these amazing people. You know, so, and so many people get so, you know, and, and there's times, yeah, with social media that I get disgruntled and, you know, especially last year, you know, just seeing so much darkness. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm not one to ever bash um, social media mm. to, you know, because it, it's been such a blessing to me, um, when, when all of that first happened, you know, coming back and being like reintroduced to this, these beautiful fans, you know, that also enabled filmmakers, mm. um, to, you know, hit me up directly. And it's just been an, I mean, just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life journey and experience. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I, I love everyone dearly. Yeah. I do. Right, right. So what was your first, because you obviously went to, then started doing conventions. Do you remember your first convention? I do. What, what was that so, experience? Yeah. So mom passed away February 4th, 2013. March was Horror Hound Cincinnati. Oh, okay. That was my first. Um, Nick, I was like, oh my God, seriously? I mean... I, I mean, all these people walking around and all these tattoos and body paint and they've got cocktails in their hands and everybody's like laughing and everybody's listening to music and having a great time. And then my line is like so long and I'm like, what the hell? Like, really? <laughs> the conventions are so important to me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I have... I'm, I'm blessed in the sense that I have been a part of so many people's lives um, at great times in their life, but in very dark times. I had a fan that came up to me um, a few months back and she started crying. And she said, you know, she said, nothing has been consistent in my life except for my love for the Halloween movies. Wow. And she said, you guys have gone through my cancer with me, my this, and she's just naming off all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, and then I started crying. And then, you know, I'm like, give me a hug, baby girl. I mean, it's just, you know, just to impact one person, but to impact so many beautiful lives. I mean, my God, how lucky are we? Right, right. Right. Yeah, no, it, it, it is extraordinary. And I, and like you, I think it's just the fascinating stories, you know, you, you hear when you're at the table and just hearing how much people have just enjoyed the work, how much they got it and how much they can put their find. And, so and I, you know, but, but too, the, the cool thing is that it's a multi-generational, um, that's what's really neat when you've got the grandparents and then you've got like the grandkids and everybody's like, you know, we're watching and they're like, Tamara, we're watching you like all the time in Halloween and blah, blah, blah. And my, my, my grandkids dress like you. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, it's, it's very, it's very endearing. 
yeah, it's really good. It's again, it's that multi genre, you know. I think, yeah. The, yeah, the young, I think the youngest fan I've ever, no, actually, no, the youngest fan I ever met, I think, was about, about four or five. Um, and he was he loved Pinhead, he thought Pinhead, obviously, Doug Bradley was just the bee's knees, and then, then I met him a few years later. And he had a younger brother, and his younger brother, now younger brother, it was definitely Chatterer. He was really, right. <laughs> it's just like, wow, this is so cool. Now you mentioned that the social media has allowed you to get in touch with um, independent filmmakers and right. kind of kicks, so from like 2014 onwards, I think you've been doing independent films. How's, how have you found that going back to kind of working on film again? Well, I, um, my boyfriend at the time when I was in Arkansas, we, we started a film festival, um, which was the Hot Springs International Film Festival. And um, the submission platforms were Without a Box Film Freeway. And then the, it, it was horror, thriller, sci-fi and fantasy. Right. And that's where I met Eileen um, the first yeah. time. She came in as our um, Lifetime Achievement um, Award. Right. So the festival opened up so many amazing doors to friendships. Um, I also got to see a lot of wonderful films and a lot of really shitty films. Um, you know, true. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, the thing that I, and I just want to say this the thing that I respect so much about the artist, the filmmaker is following through. If you can follow through from concept to completion, birth in the baby, um, you know, you're right there in my, in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. Um, right out of the gate, I was offered, I mean, there were filmmakers and directors and producers that lived like in the Northern part of the United States that were going to their banks, taking out loans to get travel money to come to Arkansas to attach me to their film. Wow. I mean, it was just, Nick, it's been a ride. It, it's, it's been this amazing ride. Right, right. Um, and then I, I decided through the energy of the film festival, I'm like, I don't want to be a part of the festival anymore. My boyfriend and I broke up and I'm like, I just want to fly and go be me. And I want to do my own thing. I want right. to act. Right. I want to act and I want to direct. Right. All right. You're talking about directing, I know you've just finished filming. You're in post, I believe, for Youth Quake. Yes. With Richie Ramon. One of the most amazing people he's one of my um one of my closest friends okay yeah um richie and in fact i've got a movie coming up with him in a couple of weeks and that will be our third film this year together right so how did you guys meet so there was an independent filmmaker that had reached out to me about doing his movie and he said um I'm going to try and get Ramon to do it. And I said, well, if you get Ramon, then I'll, then I'll come on board. I mean, that was just, that had to happen. Yeah. And um, so he got Ramon and I said, okay, I'm in. And then a few weeks after that, Richie hit me up on Facebook. And this is all during COVID. Right. And Richie's like, what do you think about a shooting? Do you think it's safe? Yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, dude, just call me. And he's like, okay. So he called me. And from that moment on, Ramon and I are like this. He's one of my sweetest. And I'm, I'm so, Richie is just this very grateful, so sweet, hardworking, kind, loving, respectful human being and I, I mess around with him I'm like Rich I'm your agent I got another job for you and I, I'm constantly trying to like you know put him in touch with like my legitimate like filmmaker friends and I'm getting your work I'm like Rich I got you and I, I told him from day one I said I got your back and he's like yeah you do and it's just been this very special cool 
you know, as friendship. Right, right, right. And he works so hard. I mean, he works and acting, he works so damn hard. Right. And he, he's just, and I told him, I said, Rich, uh, when it came to Youthquake, because we were on a vampire movie up in uh, Missouri. Right. And um, I said, Rich, you know, I said, I'm going to direct this movie coming up. And I said, uh, there's a role for you. And I said, I would, in a perfect world, ideally, I would love for you to play my husband. I said, you're, you're better than a vampire. And I want to see you stretch. And I really, really, really want you to do this with me. And he did. And he brought wow. it. He's wow. amazing 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 powerhouse actor right right what what did you find your biggest challenge is this your first time directing you know i mean the biggest challenge nick was you're trying because we shot this past march you're trying to come out of covid um i had uh like 18 19 kids from ages seven to 19, you're trying to do everything, all the prep by Zooms. It was, it was a lot. You know, I, I only worked six days last year. And then to go into having a movie of this magnitude with all these kids, uh, with all these minors, you know, and you've got to schedule the Zooms with the families. And um, it really took a lot. It did. Right. And then having to go through all the COVID safety protocol, you know, on set, always wearing a mask. Um, It's really hard to wear a mask and be on set for, you know, 10, 12 hours a day. You can't breathe, (laughs) you know, and especially because we shot down here in Florida. Oh, wow. So, you know, you've got bugs to deal with. You've got heat to deal with. I mean, you're just like downing the water. I mean, like, oh, um, Overall, it was um, it was a huge challenge, and um, but you know what, we did it, and I'm I'm forever grateful for my first AD, Lucas Stein. Um, he's one of my best friends in the entire world. Um, he's also my my roommate, um, and I am. I mean, we're married with boundaries, literally. Um, and I'm so grateful for his expertise. He's been in the business for years. I mean, he was right. Shirley McLean's personal assistant. I mean, he's done like so much. Right. And right. I'm just, I'm, I'm forever grateful for his knowledge um, and his skill sets that he right. brought to the table. I'm grateful for Manny, our DP. I mean, it was really like every, it just fit, Nick. Right. It does fit. Right. Um, so what was the, okay? So that was a challenge, and I, you know, working with kids anyway, simply because of the number of hours they're allowed to work, is that those are big challenges. What did you enjoy most? What did you feel you got most from the experience of being a director? You know, it was the passion that was reading cinematically in the kids' eyes. It was beautiful. And Richie's eyes. I mean, knowing, you know, when you're on a micro budget, very, very, very small budget, and just sitting back and and watching, you know, it's the effort. Everyone is a team put in. The parents. Um, You know, I mean, all these kids, and I had gone through all these Zooms with the kids. And I'm like, you know, you, we, have to, we have to prepare because we, we've got a very ambitious shooting schedule. We, we've got to make this happen. You know, not one kid ever called line. No, didn't happen. Promise. Wow. Yeah, I mean, wow. seriously. And this was a mix of Greek mythology, modern day politics, um, faith-based. It's a very, very, very complicated story, right? But it all, it, but it all works, right? Right. It all works. 
Right, right. Um, well, so post at the moment, when do you hope to first screen it? Um, right now that's up in discussion. Um, I'm hoping by October, November. Right. Um, right. You know, on something like this, you know, it's best to slow your roll. Yeah. And to do it the right way. Yeah. You know, I, this is one thing, this is one of those stories to where, you know, people are going to probably have to watch it two or three times because I know when I first received the script, I was like, what the hell is this? And um, even Richie, I mean, we were going like, <laughs> you know, um, but it's one of those that people will have to watch it a few times. I do think it's going to be very well received, um, especially where we are in today's world. Right. Um, I, um, there's just not a lot of movies out there that can, I mean, it's just, it's very special. Right, right. Oh, I look forward to this. This sounds fascinating. Now, we've talked about conventions earlier on. I just spotted you're going to be at Texas Frightmare in September. Oh Have you done that convention before? Yeah. You're going to so, love it. Oh, my God. I am so excited. Yeah. And two, I mean, it's cool because it's, you know, Texas is right there with my neighboring state of Arkansas. Right. Um, I, there's so many people that have been like blowing my phone up going, oh my God, I'm coming to see you. Oh my God. I mean, people I know, I mean, seriously. Yeah. yeah. I can't even believe this, Nick. It's like my dream come true. Like that is the one that, I mean, my, my phone started blowing up last night when I was announced and I'm just like, <laughs> it's, it's, and they are, I love, you know, Convention organizers, I, I, had, I, I think the world of them because they have to go right, through yeah. so much, and you know, particularly right. now and recently, but Lloyd and his gang right. are just the most welcoming, it's the best organized, you know, not just but all the volunteers, the whole atmosphere, it's just, and the, the guys from Arrow Video as well. well. You know, it's really cool. Um, I hate to like throw us off here, but um, I've got to let someone in my door. Oh, yeah. um, and we are just going to have the most amazing, like beautiful time ever. Yeah, yeah, you, you surely are. You surely are, right. The roster is, um, wow. Yeah, and no. I'm, and I, so, I'm so honored to be on this roster with, I think D Wallace is going to be there. Yeah. Um, we're, we are just going to have the best time and coming out of COVID, getting back into everything. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. What, what a way to come out fighting. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's going to be great. Now, nearly come to the end of the hour. Are you okay just to do answer some luggage in the crypt questions? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chris has briefed you. Good. Um, so as I say, when you're just about to be entombed in the most amazing pyramid in, you know, creation, and you can take whatever you want, but if I wanted to pin you down to a film, what film would you take with you? Halloween. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I'm just, yeah. I, I'm that girl, Nick. <laughs> I'm that girl. Right. What about, what about a book? Out on a Limb. I don't know this one. Shirley MacLaine. Oh. oh or, the, wow. or, the road, or the road less traveled. Because the first three, the first three words in the road less traveled, life is difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got several. Yeah, yeah. What about um what about uh, music an album? What sort of songs do you listen to? Oh Lord, I'm a music freak. Um, I mean, anyone from, you know, I mean, Pat Boone to Debbie Boone to Def Leppard to Kid Rock to everything. I listen, I'm a huge, I'm not a big fan of country music, right? but I love like all music. I mean, Kanye, I mean, I love, I'm, oh, I mean, you should see my playlist. It's crazy. Right. Crazy. If I, if I had to say, okay. Only one album, even if it's just the one Ed that Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. Ed I Sheeran. love it. I love Ed Sheeran. Oh, okay. Adele. Adele. I love everybody. I mean, yeah, Ed Sheeran or Adele. That sounds like a like a yeah, a very 
Goodness, I like, yeah, I love some of Adele's songs. They're absolutely extraordinary. What about uh, a favorite food or drink? Favorite food would be baked oysters. Okay. Yes, because I'm down here in Florida now oh, and I have this amazing restaurant like a couple of blocks from me and I go there um, all the time um, and I always order their baked, they're, it's the best baked oysters in the world with the spinach and the cream sauce and the cheese. Oh, divine. <laughs> um, you know, my favorite drink, honestly, is decaf unsweetened tea. Oh, I know. I'm so boring. No, 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 it's fine. Do you take that, it with that, milk? That in, no, that and no. that in LaCroix. That in coconut flavored LaCroix. I mean, I'm just, yeah, my favorite. Yeah. yeah. And, I'll, and I've got to have my coffee. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that seems fair enough. Yeah. What about a piece of visual on art, um, painting or a sculpture? Van Gogh. Really, which one? There's there's um all of there's an immersive van gogh show coming to miami yeah um soon yeah. and so i'm really hoping that i will be around to take that in um you know i love helmet newton ansel adams ah. yeah is that immersive van gogh just as pandemic hit last year it was in london and right. we were going to go and then we left it two days we were locked down no, I was so frustrated. It's like, oh, because I'm I'm a huge fan of, of Van Gogh. I'm, I'm hoping, seriously, I'm hoping I will be around when um when they come to town. Yeah, because I mean, it's just it looks amazing. Right, right. And lastly, what about a what about a luxury, something of no practical use whatsoever, an object, a, a thing, or a luxury? Honestly, oh boy. You know, I will tell you this, it's a luxury being able to fly out to go to work. Right, right. That to me, you know, that's not something to ever be taken for granted. Right. And um, right. that is that is something to always be respected. Right. And um, that is a, I, I would consider that a nice luxury. Right, right, right. Well, we will arrange the most amazing plane for you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a virtually travel. Wonderful. Tamara, thank you so much. This has been really fascinating. Awesome. I just, um, I'm so appreciative of you and thank you. And, you know, um, you know, a huge shout out and all my love to Chris Rowe. Yes. Um, and yes. his team, um, you know, and I, you know, life is, life is awesome. And, you know, I, I pray and I hope that everyone out there stays safe. And, um, you know, we're, we're all in this together. It, it's been tough. Mm. You know, it, it's really been a tough time for so many. And, um, you know, just I want people to know that they're not alone. We're, we're all coming back, um, you know, experiencing whatever this new normal is or whatever you want to call it. But, yeah. you know, just... I want everyone to know they're not alone. Mm. And if anyone ever needs to talk or has, you know, issues or anything, and they're feeling down, or if they just want to say hi, I want them to know that they're always welcome to hit me up. Cool. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you very much indeed. And hopefully I will get to see you sometime, probably on your side of the world. You better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I look forward to it. Take care, Tamara. Bye. All right, sweetheart. Thank you. You too. My thanks again to Tamara Glynn, and in particular of her honesty about that story from Halloween 5. I'm so glad things are changing, though I'm sure there's much work to be done. Join me next week on The Chattering Hour for some more great stories from the worlds of horror, thriller, and suspense. And in the meantime, stay safe and well. Thank you.